can you please elaborate your views on risk? You clearly aren't a fan of relying on statistical probabilities, and you highlight the need for $20 billion in cash to feel comfortable. Why is that the magic number, and has it changed over time? Yeah. Well, it, it isn't the magic number, uh, and uh, there is no magic number. Uh, I would get very worried about somebody that walked in every morning and told us precisely how many dollars of cash we needed to be, you know, secured to three sigma or something like that. Uh, uh, Charlie and I have had a lot of, we saw a lot of problems develop in, or, in an organization that, that expressed their risks in sigma. Uh, and uh, we even argued sometimes with the appropriateness of, of how they calculated their risk. And they, it they, was truly horrible. Yeah, the, and they were a lot smarter than we were. That's what was it. yeah. <laughs> it's depressing. But uh, uh, we, we both have the same bent of mind whereby we, we, we think about worst cases all the time and then we add on a big margin of safety and uh, we don't want to go back to go. I mean, I, I enjoy tossing those papers in the other room, but uh, I don't want to do it for a living again. It, 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 uh, so we undoubtedly build in layers of, of, of safety that others re might regard as foolish. Uh, but we've got 600,000 shareholders, and we've got members of my family that have 80 or 90 percent of their net worth in the company, and I'm, I'm just not interested in explaining to them that we went broke because there was a one hundredth of one percent chance that we would go broke, and there was a, the remaining uh, probability was filled by the chance of doubling our money, and I decided that that was just a good gamble to take. We're not going to do that. It, 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 uh, it doesn't mean that much. We are never going to risk what we have and need for what we don't have and don't need. We'll still find things to do at the, where we can make money, but we don't have to stretch to do it. And uh, as my job, and, and you know, and Charlie thinks the same way. I mean, we uh, we don't talk have to talk about it much, but but it's our job to figure out what can really go wrong with this place. And, you know, we've seen September 11th, and we've seen September of 2008, and we'll see other things of, of a different nature but similar impact in the future. And we not only want to sleep well all those nights, we want to be thinking about things to do with some excess money we might have around. So it is, if you're calibrating it in some mathematical way, I would say it's really dangerous. I could give you a couple of examples on that, but that unfortunately, they're, uh, I've learned about them on a confidential basis. But, but some really great organizations have had dozens of people with advanced mathematical training and, make, and thinking about it daily, making computations. And they don't really, they don't really get at the problem. Uh, so it, it's at the top of the mind always around virtue, and your returns in 99 years out of 100 will probably be penalized by be, us being excessively conservative, and one year out of 100 will survive when some other people won't. Charlie? Yeah, but how do these super smart people with all these degrees and higher mathematics end up doing these dumb things? I think it's explainable by the old proverb that to a man with a hammer, every problem looks pretty much like a nail. They, they've learned these techniques and they, they just twist the problem <laughs> so they fit the solution, which is not the way to do it. And they have a lack of understanding of history, I would say. that One of the things in 1962, when I set up our office at Kiewit Plaza, where we still are, it's a different floor. I put seven items on the wall. Our, our art budget was seven dollars, and I went down to the library, and for a dollar each, I made photocopies of, of the pages of, from financial history. And one of those cases, for example, was in May of 1901, when the Northern Pacific Corner occurred. And uh, it's kind of interesting in terms of being in Omaha, because 
uh, Harriman was trying to get control of the Northern Pacific and James J. Hill was trying to control the Northern Pacific and unbeknownst to each other, they both bought more than 50% of the stock. Now, when two people buy more than 50% of the stock each and they both really want it, they're not just going to resell it. You know, interesting things happen. To the shorts. And uh, in that paper of May 1901, the whole rest of the market was totally collapsing because Northern Pacific went from $170 a share to $1,000 a share in one day, trading for cash because the shorts needed it. And there was a little item at the top of that paper, uh, which we still have at the office, uh, where a brewer in Troy, New York, committed suicide by diving into a vat of hot beer because he'd gotten a margin call. And to me, the lesson, that, that fellow probably understood sigmas and everything and knew how impossible it was that in one day a stock could go from 170 to 1,000 to cause margin calls on everything else. And he ended up in the vat of hot beer, and I've never wanted to end up in the vat of hot beer. So <laughs> and those seven days that I put up on the wall, life, life in financial markets has got no relation to sigmas. I mean, if, if, if everybody that operated in financial markets had never had any concept of standard errors and so on, they would be a lot better off. Don't you think so, Charlie? Well, sure. <laughs> Here, have it's some credit. It's, credit <laughs> it's created a lot of false confidence. And, and now it has gone away. Again, the, as I said earlier, the business schools have improved. So has risk control on Wall Street. They now have taken the Gaussian curve and they've just changed the shape. Away. They threw it away. Well, they, put, they just made it a different shape than Gauss did. And, uh, and it's, it's a better curve now, even though it's less precise. They, they talk about fat tails, but they still yeah. don't know how fat yeah. to make them. Yeah. Right. They have no right. idea. Well, but they knew that they, they learned through painful they experience. Learned the they weren't wrong. fat enough. <laughs> yeah, they learned the other was wrong. Yeah. But they don't know what's right. Uh, but we, we always knew that they were, there were fat tails. Warren and I at the Solomon meetings would look over at one another and roll our eyes when the risk control people were talking. Okay, Jay. This question is on, on Swiss Re. <clears throat> Berkshire's quota share treaty with Swiss Re covering 20% of Swiss Re's property casualty risk ends in 2012. Does Berkshire plan to replace that premium volume through another transaction? Well, we would hope to, we always hope to get more good volume, but, but what we do has no relationship to the expiration of that contract. I mean, uh, that contract was a five-year contract. It's a big contract, billions of dollars a year. Uh, but the fact that that expires and our premium volume will go down by multiple billions does not cause us to do one thing differently than we would do otherwise. We've got the capacity to write billions and billions of business, and we would love to do it if we were expanding the Swiss Re contract, and we, we don't want to write any dumb business if, when, we, when we lose that contract. It just, it's just, it's a non-event in terms of future strategy. It's not a non-event in terms of losing some business that we like but it's not an event in terms of any future strategy. We regard every decision, you know, as independent. We don't do, if money comes in, that doesn't cause us to want to think about doing something today that we weren't thinking about doing the day before. Uh, it, it, we just don't, we don't operate that way. We, 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 uh, uh, we'll, have, we'll have things that come along that are terrific, and that doesn't mean it's, that the next day we don't want to look for something additionally that's terrific. It's, every decision is sort of independent. I don't think there's another large insurance operation in the world that is more cheerful about losing volume than we are. If it doesn't make sense, we don't the want business it. has to shrink, we let it shrink. Yeah. Yeah. We don't measure ourselves in any way. By size. By size. Except by the growth in value over time. <laughs>